The demo is countryboardinganddaycare.com. That's the name of the business. So if I click this as a pet owner, it takes me into uh, a totally optional dashboard. I'm going to go to a page that I created as the business owner of this business. And it's um, a sample. It's completely gen um, generically created. This bunch of gibberish here. And I have some examples here where the customer can book. So uh, pet boarding, there's some daycare there, some full grooming, dog walking. Maybe I'll book a dog walk since you guys are uh, pet sitters. Mm -hmm. Now, the fact that it's going to let me be able to book in the first place right now is because um, I have filled out all the documents. I have passed all the checks and balances of the system that was programmed by the owner of the business to make sure the vaccinations are up to date, that sort of thing. Okay. So all the service agreements have been filled out. If it's not the case, it would stop me from booking right now. So I click book. And it takes me into an experience, um, which is unique to the business that I have set up here. The pet owner goes through some questions like feeding add-ons in this case. It's a 30-minute dog walk. It knows who she is. So she has three pets. Let's choose Daisy for now. And let's pause here for a minute. Uh, I have a team of 20 people. Five of them are dog walkers. And when the pet owner selects the 17th, amongst those five dog walkers who are actually available for work, these are the times that are served to the pet owner to choose from. Does that make sense what's happening here? Yes, yes, yes. You just flip a switch, add more team members, it'll consider all that information in serving the customer. It doesn't have to be start times like this. This is highly generic. You can have um, labels like uh, midday or 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. or something like that, whatever words you want. And then it manifests on your calendar in an inappropriate way. And then there's repeating options as well. Um, let's just stick with whatever we have set up here. Um, choices in location could be from and to if you're like a like a like a pickup drop off kind of service. There's all kinds of scenarios. It could be hard coded. You know, if you're a trainer at a park, that's where they have to go, so they don't really get to select their address. There's a stage where it asks people questions, um, transactional ones like um, you know, is there anything new about their medication that we should be aware of, and if so, you know, what are what's the dosage or something like that. So. Um, here's what's happening here, guys. The system is finalizing with this being a request to the business for the pet owner to request the service. There's pricing, which could be completely unique to this dog. This dog has attributes, which you define as the business owner. It could be, I'm, I'm just going to keep things simple, breed or hair length or size or age or behavior patterns, whatever you want. You start from complete scratch on Easy Busy Pets when you set up. So based on that combination of stuff, there's a price and perhaps even a different duration if you want it set up that way. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, a good example is think about groomers. Not that you're a groomer, but let's say you come in with a Mastiff or a Chihuahua and you're using a full groom service. You know, in one case, it's going to be a four-hour thing. In another case, it'll be you know like an hour, something like that, right? Hair length, uh, all those things change the price. So it's really important to have that dynamic experience where you don't have to have many back and forth calls or SMS um, communications, right? Gotcha. So it goes in as a request. I'd like to book, um, since you do pet sitting, I'd like to book an overnight to show you that the experience is quite different. So. This is the lady who is doing the booking right now on this mobile phone, just so you know, it's, her name is Stephanie. Gotcha. All right. So she just got uh, some confirmations. Uh, let's go to book now. And as you can see, I have a lot of options here. Um, perhaps uh, it's like a kennel, okay? Or maybe it's boarding where there's no rooms or anything associated that, with that. We do support kennels. Some, some of our kennels are over 80 runs, which is, you know, the physical rooms that people stay in. And there's availability for that, too. So if the pet owner goes ahead and clicks for a standard kennel, the experience is very similar to if you set up like a boarding for pet sitting sort of thing where all the dogs sleep on a couch. Anyway, 
Um, this footer, by the way, it's all it's all custom, all the colors. See, it stays on countryboardingandaycare.com. There's no easy busy pets showing here. Uh, it's asking which pet. Okay, let's use Bobby this time. And I guess my point is the look and feel of this calendar is very, very different from what you saw earlier because it's not a half an hour thing or a four hour thing. It's per night. And even the options for times, you know, they're different. So drop off at this time, pick up maybe a couple weeks later at that time. These are all things you set up when you start with Easy Busy Pets so that the pet owner has the appropriate options. The location is at a facility in this case. It might ask some questions. I got a little lazy. I didn't put any pull down menus or check boxes or anything like that, but you could. It's a fully functional uh, forms technology. This stuff graduates into what is a channel card set up in the system in my sample design here. And what is that called, you said? Something card? Well, uh, kennels, they have this thing called- Oh, a kennel card. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So common terminology. Other people use the term index cards. We have all that. Yeah, I like that. Kennel card. And we have the calendar system for it as well. Um, that is for rooms alone versus services that could be done in the field or just um, randomly at the little location not associated with a particular uh, suite or something like that. Um, it even knows per night, you know, it's not a thing like per half an hour or per 24 hours. I mean, you could do that, but it's, this is prettier. It makes more sense. It's, you know, it understands that you charge, you're going to be charging to what per, you know, 24 hours per night sort of thing, or per day, you can do that as well. And it becomes a request. Now it, it doesn't have to, it could be automatically booked in. Um, and there are, you know, all kinds of payment scenarios involved with that. Um, now we service we service all kinds of pet care businesses, you know, groomers, there's daycares, there's uh, trainers and, um, you know, uh, hotels, there's uh, pet sitters and dog walkers and wellness people, you know, um, and they have all kinds of things that they need set up in terms of payment acceptance. Mm -hmm. Know that there's deposits, there's partial payments, there's, you know, all kinds of scenarios there. Uh, on There's on-site machines if you need it from us or people's cards are online and ready to be charged. I'll show you a little bit more about that later, but uh, we do tailor and to all those scenarios. Um, you saw some pricing at the end of so kind of like a quote when pet owner was booking. Um, so that price could have been $0, you know, covered by your membership, which you've been paying for sir, so far. Also, I was thinking, you know, when you set up, you know how you go to some sites and, you know, they'll talk about memberships because I'm really, really, I want to structure this thing with memberships right out of the gate. Okay. You know, this membership, you know, has these available available features in it. And as you go up, you know, you get to the 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 gold or the platinum membership right. and it has all these other features. And that may also have something connected with pricing. You know, if they're, they come in and they're a platinum member, you know, here's all the benefits of it. They, cause I was thinking of doing this thing from the standpoint of hours, you know, you know, if you're a platinum member, you know, annually you get, you know, 150 right. hours or something like that. And then you get like discounts and these completely separate things, like maybe you're selling a leash or something. So it's sure. them instead of 20. Yeah. It's all part of that feature set. Um, and packages is a, a really a derivative of memberships. It also works in the background. As they use it up, it knows it reduces the, uh, the increments of uh, their credits. It's designed for you to scale your business. So, you know, if you're a business that just wants to kind of coast and not grow, then maybe this is not for you. But if you do want to grow, if you do want to even just be really super hyper efficient so that you can enjoy your days and work you know, 12 hours a week just on some sort of manual billing and reconciliation of information, then definitely this is for you. <laughs> and one okay. question on that, Jonathan, too, is, you know, all these different categories, all these different, you know, numbers, those things there, do the analytics, do they play out that I can, you know, I can go back and says, yeah. oh, okay, you know, this is, this is where, you know, there's, th these are the, you know, it's like McDonald's, you know, where do they make their money? They don't make their money on yeah. the camera. These they are the their, performing their money products. On the and on the, on the, um, the, the, the drinks, 
you know yeah so so our system can handle products too right and services and of course the memberships and packages and you can see how they're performing by client um uh, as well uh throughout time and including what you should expect in the future as well based on what's booked in the system make sense yes sir yes sir it's all good stuff man all good stuff so now i'm going to show you something um just going to open up a uh, text box here okay so let's say you're um we were the pet owner right now on the mobile phone right easy busy pets it can handle four different users there's the pet owner which we saw on the mobile phone there's the manager there's employees these could be like third-party contractors or staff or something in the middle or supervisors that's what that's where permissions kind of comes in permissions for your staff members and what they can do with the system and then there's the general public all right um any pet care business should have a website okay um i have a sample one called country boarding and daycare.com mm -hmm. it is hosted by easy busy pets and I'm in this incognito tab so that it doesn't know who I am. Why? Because I want to show that I'm the general public. It shouldn't recognize me in this mode. And this is how the, the website has been set up completely from a blank canvas. There's multiple pages. Um, these are all the booking options and so on and so forth, right? Typical website um, that I set up for my demonstrations. People might try to book but if it doesn't recognize them then it'll ask them to register as a new customer and fill out all the appropriate documents that you want them to fill out service agreements um media release forms vaccinations veterinary releases that's you know, questionnaires uh, how did they find you whatever you want actually nice nice yeah. now do i do, in setting this up because everyone can have a different look do i oh. i have my own designer that puts this together or that's do i put someone from your team we don't uh so think of us as the platform provider um when when you work with you know other uh website builders out there they don't they will we'll provide templates if you don't have a design uh but we don't do the designs for you that's that's for you know artists that are familiar with you know how to design websites properly Got it. um you know so this is the platform where you build the website uh on if that makes sense now let me show you some cool stuff uh pet owner book um, we saw what the country boarding and daycare would look like for somebody who's visiting your site who you're not, you know, you, you don't have a relationship with. What happens if it's you? You just go to countryboardingdaycare.com. Nothing special, no specific path. This is also unique about Easy Busy Pets because we're a website builder. You don't have to go to countryboardingdaycare.com/easybusypets. That's not a thing. Mm -hmm. It recognized me and logged me in right away as a manager. Mm -hmm. Just like it would recognize me as a pet owner and take me to my pet owner experience or worker, it would take me to my worker's experience. It's based on a lot of metrics and parameters that it's possible to make that happen. Now, a couple of things you'll notice is that I have a ribbon of controls. Our website builder is one sixth or one seventh of our capabilities. So we got website services that you have to set up for memberships and packages, your scheduling system, uh, invoicing technology. For getting paid, um, your client CRM, which involves pets too. And then why am I seeing the website? <laughs> well, because you can create pages. It was never like this at the beginning. It's completely blank. You create your pages, you establish your domain hosting, and now you can make changes to your site and uh, create your content in real time um, using our website builder. And it's um, a drag and drop thing. Like, um, I don't usually get into it in the demos too much um, because there's a lot to show, um, but it's very straightforward. You take, you know, whatever it is you want to drag and drop. Um, website builders, you, you, you add text and pictures, wherever. All this was created that way, by the way. Everything you're seeing here on this page, that's how it was created using these uh, drag and drop items. Uh, what's special about us is that because you also have your operations in the, in, in the system, you can drag and drop booking options and um, um, you know training um, uh, training uh, widgets or elements that 
uh, basically show, uh, let's say, open enrollment. You know, oh, here's all the group classes. So you just click to join that. Your website is also your software now. So you don't have to uh, leave your website to get those services done for you. Yeah. So I know that you, you're you probably exploring a couple other schedulers, let's say. We've, we've spoken about one earlier. Mm -hmm. If you were to have a website elsewhere and you went for that scheduler, then whenever somebody comes on your website, they would quickly leave your website to, in my case, country boarding and daycare doc scheduling software.com. And that experience would not be unique to your brand. And they would have to start from the beginning even though they went to your website, went into, let's say, the daycare category, learned a little bit more about you and clicked the book because they thought they were going to book their dog right away, right there. Well, in our case, it knows that. It knows them. It knows their pets. It knows whether they can book. They don't leave countryboardinganddaycare.com. But they would otherwise go to that scheduler server and start from completely the beginning. They would have to log in and everything, every time. Yeah. And, then they, and then let's say they wanted to pay you. And let's say you wanted to offer them a membership where they would pay you. How would the membership app know what's been scheduled? That's to totally different systems. <laughs> and that's just example, uh, an example of two apps not really possibly working together. You know, um, think of it to create a membership app that's also pet centric, right? Mm -hmm. That's just a small example. Yeah, and the yeah, no, it's, I think it's it's fantastic. I mean, you guys have. You built it, you know, especially for this industry. You built it. We did, yeah, yeah. So we're pretty, we're pretty proud. But that's that's the idea of the website. Um, it's to be the glue of the online experience. But that's as much as I talk about it. I just wanted to show the fact that you know you have this capability. Even dashboards now, like management, you know, they can come in and they can create a page that only they see, and there's dashboards that with items. I I. I made it quite simple, but these are requests that are coming in from clients. I can accept and decline in my dashboard. But I usually like to show you the scheduling and how you can do it from there. Fair enough? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you mentioned about a store you know, selling products. Um, and um, obviously, this is a service. But then what about products? Is there some sort of store then that you have? Yeah, yeah you basically, you, you create products uh, just like you create services in the system. Obviously, there's different parameters and settings. And then when you create pages, um, you add them. Uh, you drag and drop the products into your page and create the pictures and the content, and it would be an add to cart, which once again, doesn't take you off the site. They just pay you right there. There's a cart. Pet owners have a cart. It's not just a service thing. Yeah, because I was thinking of doing something like, uh, you know, the Bark Box. You may have heard that, you know, the person, you know, monthly, they get this box. You know, and sure. it's got different little toys and items type in there. And that yeah. could be part of your membership as well. That you can set up a BarkBox membership. Exactly. And exactly. It, can, it can be including the, the product as part of that membership mm -hmm. on a regular basis. And it doesn't have to be monthly. It could be every three days or something, weeks, whatever you want. And there's all kinds of business rules to help you with that. Yeah. Right. But imagine you had 10,000 clients. Well, you can't do all that stuff manually. And that's where Easy Busy Pets shines. So let me show you around a little bit, if that's okay. Yes, please. Um, we have six different calendars for now. Um, I'm in the weekly calendar. I got to it by clicking schedule and just choosing week. Do you see what I did there? I'm going to show you the same thing across the different views. It's kind of important to add context. Um, in the weekly view, obviously, you have Sunday to Saturday up top, and these are all my employees. Okay. And just so you know, everything's drag and drop by person even. Um, so I just dragged the 30-minute dog walk to Sunday from Monday and to Jane instead of myself. Mm. And I can narrow down. So it doesn't have to be staff. It could be, you know, if you're a, a like a grooming, a mobile dog grooming company, then this might be your bands, you know. So you can narrow down who and what type of work. Um we do it this way because color coding doesn't really work very well when you get really big. You'll have like thousands of colors. So you need to narrow down your information. Um, there's even a Google style search here. I'm wondering, okay, um, how's where's where's Bobby? I you know it's, does he have anything this week? Um, and then I might have multiple Bobbies to choose from. 
and Bobby could be a client or Bobby could be a, an employee. So you're basically narrowing down that information. I'm going to clear it for a second here. Um, anything that's yellow is a request from the customer for you to accept. I can left click it right now and do all kinds of things. Um, anything in blue is in progress. Anything in green has been completed. And gray is something that's built but hasn't started yet. Fair enough. So some of these, you might see that it's a group event. Well, these are also served to clients on a website in a proper way. You know, here's a list of all the group events that you can choose from and join. But you book them here because this is your personal management calendar. Make sense? Yeah. Is there a way to associate this with Facebook? Yeah, we do. We have, uh, it's actually one of, one part of uh, my demonstration. I'll show you how. There's a couple ways. Gotcha. We, so uh, just to list a few, uh, you can uh, source all your Facebook reviews on your website. Um, you can also send automated client reviews to Facebook. Um, there's um, a, widget, a couple of widgets involving showing uh, all your social network um, options for people to click. When uh, you're running your job and you're sending people pictures, people being your pet owners, they can share it on their timelines on Facebook. But it's more than that. It actually allows their circle of trust to click on it and return back to your website to become your customer as well. So there's lots of things going on here. Okay, I just named a few, right? Um, let's go to the daily agenda for a sec. Sorry, I'm going to click on the day one first. Um, it's one day at a time. I don't know if you noticed, but there's this pull down here where you can choose your week or your day or whatever. Today's the 17th, right? Um, groomers really love this view because you have your workers up top, time on the left. They like it because it can kind of really fit things in. Does that make sense? Yes. Same information, just by day. Um, you can even narrow it down by what's starting and ending because that's the day, the day of, right? Um, we have these things called smart fields where depending on the pet, and their attributes, the duration will be different um, between, from pet one to pet two that is booked in, including the pricing, right? Um, traditionally, groomers have been using this view to kind of stretch things and fit them in because that was all in their heads. You know, 160 different breeds, it's all in their heads for whatever reason. Well, they kind of don't need to do that anymore because the system fits um, the pets in based on their uh, workers' availability. It's stretched automatically based on the attributes of the pet. Make sense? Gotcha. And the, Am I putting those attributes in or is it built into this? Uh, it's not built in because every business is different. What's okay. built in is the ability to set it up. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, the agenda is the same. It's just showing the same information just chronologically instead. It's my favorite view because I have these controls on the right. I don't have to take it. I don't have to leave this page to do various actions. The management dashboard that I set up there is kind of similar. But anyway, um, here's uh, the times when they're starting. The, that's the client. Some clients have multiple pets. Some appointments have multiple clients and multiple pets in there. We do it, we do it all. Um, these are the titles of the appointments. These are the workers that are doing them. See, they're all interactive. I can actually click on any of these and let's say view the profile or whatever. If I'm on my mobile phone, which I'll show you in just a moment, um, and I clicked on this um, uh, address, it would actually take me to the uh, navigation on my um, cell phone that I'm working with in the field. And I can start navigation to this destination from wherever I am. That's sort of thing. A question for you in regards to, you know, you go in here as a manager, you know, administrator, whatever the case may be. And you see something's you know not quite correct with the timing or whatever the case, and then you move that. Do all parties get a notification? You know, yeah, by default, they do. You can turn off the notifications though because it can get really overwhelming how many notifications everybody gets. So we do start it up with everything, and then you need to uncheck what you don't want. Gotcha. So, but I'm just thinking of the owner. Does he get notified? Does the worker get notified? You know, if you start moving things or something. Yes. And it, what you'll see here is I'm logged in as a manager. So I'm going to be making changes on behalf of Jane, who's supposed to be doing it herself. If I've given her the permissions, mind you, to be able to do it herself. 
-hmm. So she's going to be getting notified that I've made changes to her appointment. Okay. And by the way, she can pull all her Google Calendar on her cell phone uh, appointments, like let's say she's going to the doctor or something like that, onto the system as well, so that her availability is up to date. Okay. Not just whatever her availability settings are on a regular weekly basis. Um, now, see this one. This is actually the booking that just came in from Stephanie on the mobile phone. Okay. So, as the manager of the business, I have these options where I can accept, I can decline, um, I can delegate it to the st a different staff member, not Jane, and various other things. I can make updates such that after I make those updates, I can accept it, or I can propose it back to the customer. It can be a back and forth. Fair enough. I'm really confident that Jane's available for the job, so I'm just going to accept it, which makes now, it... In that situation, basically, because we're talking about automating, automation, the mm -hmm. client goes in, they select, you know, the the uh, pet care, you know, employee for that particular job. Mm -hmm. If that employee accepts it, you know, mm -hmm. do you have to interact with that or is it just already, it's booked, it's done? Um, you can, so the way I have it set up is I, I, I want to, like most businesses, that's surprising to us, uh, by the way, and we've been doing this for a while, especially at the beginning is people wanted to still have control. They didn't want the system to automatically accept, though we do have the automation accept option as well as the prepay option. So like you can force people to pay it in full before, and, and then it'll automatically accept. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. But so that that you can do that, set it up so that it is fully automated, you know, that if that yeah, groomer is available or if that, you know. Yeah, you could. It's just person. people elect not to do that because, um, well, at the beginning, they're just concerned that they, too much, too much control has been taken away from them and uh, they're not used to it. <laughs> so well, I like I like how you guys your your. Um, your your page you know when you go in there it's basically just a one one landing page you know that's there well there's many pages there like you can have you know about us or uh, a reviews page a blog we do blog you can have a beautiful blog it's designed for search engine optimization not to like entertain your customers but yeah. it's a blog uh you can have a meet the team why that this is not like us forcing you to go that way that's just what's typical Right, 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 right. And it's very straightforward. It's very straightforward. So I appreciated that. And, and yeah, uh, it was, and, it, and it was, I don't know, very, the very fact that I don't know what a page I started with, and it was talking about membership, and it, it, it caught my attention. So I was thoroughly engaged, you know, when I started looking at it, you know, yeah, membership is a big deal. Um, you know, we thought our reviews technology, which is a breakthrough would be the big deal. But membership. which one is that? We have a reviews technology. I'll show you how. Oh, review. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. I, I, I saw that as well. Because yeah. right now, right, right now, what's happening is people are overwhelmed. They have like appointments till April, okay, and they are not talking to us right now about getting more clients. They're talking about how not to turn away clients. Got you. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, this is this is the point where I've accepted the job. I can actually take a deposit here. If I want to, but because you're a pet sitter, I want I want to show you something really well. Because you're planning to start with pet sitting and dock walking, I would advise to wait until uh, we do uh, bulk billing right at the end of this demonstration. I think it'll be much more powerful for you than taking deposits. Although we do have automated deposits that we can take. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually switch to the mobile phone because I I like to show off the fact that. Um, it doesn't matter which device that you're on, if that makes sense. And uh, what I did was, while we were chatting, I logged in as a manager of the business, the very same account that you saw on the PC there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. You actually have a little bit more features than the mobile phone because it has a phone uh, camera and it has a phone GPS, which is a, a feature option if you want to show your location. Um, all the same options like scheduling, for example, they're up top. And this is the exact same day that we were looking at earlier. Make sense? Mm -hmm. It does reconfigure itself appropriately to look on the screen because it has to. Um, you know, it, it has to accommodate the device that it's on. 
And that's unique about our technology. Um, anyway, I'll continue here, but I wanted to point that out. So if I refresh this same account, this is the job that I'm at. And I'm actually going to go ahead and check in. I could do that from like one of the many pages I create with various dashboard elements. So I can have like a listing of all my checking options and just check into the one that I want to and stay on that page. But, you know, just showing you a little bit more of an advanced look in one of the schedules, if that's okay. So it started the job and I can continue working elsewhere. And I'm staying on my agenda, which means I can actually send pictures and notes and check out. So I have uh, various options on what I can do. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go into the appointment, if that makes sense, to show off a few things, okay? Okay, so I'm going to focus on this camera icon here on the right, but I just want to explain what you're seeing here. Um, not everyone is the same. Every business is different. And when I created my demo system on Easy Busy Pets, I designed all the pets to have a certain set of forms, documents, and profile. And when I did that, each element, each piece of detail that I set up for to be collected by either the management or staff or the pet owner themselves and they're signing up, I chose whether I want it to be part of an index card. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when that happened, it shows up in various places so that I don't have to go looking for it, including the appointments themselves. And that's why you're seeing all these details. Okay. These are completely unique to my setup. Yours would be different. Maybe it's empty completely. I like to show off the alarm code for the home of Stephanie because dog walkers that I present to, um, and we present to everybody, all kinds of pet care. So this wouldn't apply to anyone, but maybe somebody who visits somebody home, somebody's home. But when you come into a home and starts to alarm, you don't want to click on Stephanie, then scroll down in her profile to her forms, then find the form that has the alarm code, then scroll down and find the alarm code. Um, you know, that's not conducive to um, a quick turnaround in terms of getting it resolved. Okay, and don't get me wrong, it's beautiful. Um, the, the user experience is beautiful, but it's too many clicks. Yeah, I was wondering about that because I was thinking if, if you're going to sit, you know, um, you know, usually that staff worker has some sort of folder, you know, with some information relating to the client. So right. that's, that was one of my things there, but you get all the details, you got it worked out. Good. Okay. All there. So let's get into the fun stuff. I'm gonna click this camera here. And um, here I can add notes if I want to, but actually what's important is to take a photo, okay? So I'm gonna take a photo and um, I don't actually have my dog with me. So I'm gonna make a picture of this uh, mouse that I have, <laughs> okay? That's So that's if like if the, um... The, the worker arrives, they can take a picture showing the condition of the dog on their arrival, you know. Multiple, multiple pictures, yeah. yeah. Multiple pictures and uh, so forth. So, which is pretty awesome. Here's here's that picture we made and I can SMS it to the customer right away, by the way. Um, I can also e message, email them uh, this picture as well. Um, you don't have to take a picture from your um, from your camera. You can also take it from your photo library. So I'm just gonna uh, find one. Here's a picture of my dog. Okay, she's just hanging out on my floor. All right, so I'm gonna choose her. So this is from my phone, okay? It doesn't have to be from the camera if you don't want it to be. And yeah. I'll, I'll just add that to the appointment. And once again, I can see there's just multiple options for you to communicate these things. Uh, with their commentary, although that's not something I would add typically, unless it's separate from the picture, just like whatever you want to comment. But here's the interesting thing. Uh, pet owners, they don't have to wait for you to message them. Okay. So I have this switcheroo. I'm going to switch over to the pet owner view. Um, let's pretend that you and I are the pet owner, Stephanie, okay? And we're working in our office and we just log in to a completely different machine from what we use at home. Um, this is what it might look like. 
uh, it's a sample dashboard off the shelf. And uh, here's some pictures. As you can see, I, I, I use whatever I have lying around. Yeah, sure, sure. I don't, my, my dog, she doesn't like to hang out with me too much. She's shy of cameras. So they're seeing these updates. Here's the, uh, it's very busy in terms of data because I use this person as my demonstration pet owner regularly. Actually view one of these pictures in the appointment that they're part of okay. as the pet owner, okay? Now they're getting these notifications as well through email and stuff like that. So they come back here as well. If they like what they see, then they're going to share this picture on their Facebook. It also graduates to their Instagram, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, great job. Um, let's say R for your name, not make it public. Uh, thank you so much for taking care of Daisy. She looks so happy. All right. Your dot com, your business name there post. This is the pet owner posting it on the pet owner's timeline. You don't have control over this, but you're also not paying for it. It's organic. Okay. Uh, it's social and it's definitely marketing because of what you're about to see. So let's log out of here for a second. Pet owner did their part, <laughs> at least for now. If we go to Facebook, uh, let's Let's assume that you and I are friends, family, and colleagues of this pet owner, and we like what we see, and we have to have pets. When they click on it, it'll actually take them somewhere. It's obviously a button of some kind. So pet owner, pet owner clicks this, and it takes them to your website, your.com. And there's the picture, and they can book your other stuff. Okay, these are all clickable. Or they can sign up and become a customer. That kind of fun stuff. Fair enough. Sorry, I can't hear you because you're you're on mute right now. Yeah, very nice. All right, now let me show you the more interesting stuff. In my opinion, what's really bang for your buck. So we're back as the worker. Okay, so they're finished their job, right? Pet owner is. Um, uh, ready to pick up their, their dog or the worker has done their work to send a notification, right? Um, so they click checkout. That's that's cool. So they click checkout. Um, there's a notification that goes to the client here, okay? See, it turns green, by the way. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open that because um, it it's the same device as the pet owner. So I actually have the email that just went out to the pet owner. And that's what it looks like for me. That's, you know, my... You know, my branding here, it's quite simplistic. Yours would be more interesting. All right. And essentially, this is what should be a normal uh, feature for any pet-centric kind of CRM scheduler. Here's what went down, okay? That's that's that link right there. It's for them to, you know, observe. This is the pet owner seeing this report. We take it to the next level. I think this took us like almost a decade to build. Uh, in your words, are you happy with us? Okay. Yes, please leave a review. Stays on your team. No extra links, no bothering them from you directly. Five star. Usually it's about a couple of paragraphs that you know people write. Um, so I'm just gonna write something like great job R. And I am not a robot. Okay, it wants me to make sure I'm real human you know verify great it can go to facebook it can go to google it can be your yelp whatever you want it's just whatever i have set up here and it's submitted it's been a breakthrough because it's it's moving uh, businesses from receiving let's say one review every three months through their manual efforts to hundreds of reviews assuming you do hundreds of appointments per month <laughs> okay per month this is literally words from our own customers. It's it really is a breakthrough. Um, so what's happening in my setup here, and um, you can have it the way you want it to be. But basically, the way I set it up with my business rules for my reviews is that whenever somebody gives me a certain review, past a certain star rating, I just have it pop up on my website or what multiple places throughout my site, wherever I want this widget and how I want it to look. 
So that's why it's here right now. This is literally what just came from the panel on my website. Now, the uh, breakthrough was not why we built it. The breakthrough is that, you know, it's resulting in hundreds of reviews, hence quantity and um, recency. So, you know, November 17th is the today versus back in 2016. So pet owners, if you're a startup, pet owners, they want to see this stuff so that they can trust you if they've never heard of you before. Fair enough? Yes. I'm just obviously I'm simplifying it, but that's the idea. We just didn't build it. Um, we built it for search engine optimization. Um, these apps that do reviews, they're really great. They, they charge a lot of money for it. Uh, you know, it could be thousands of dollars for some of them every six months or so. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is that they don't work. They're not part of your website. They they, right. are, they run on their own servers. And when people come to your site, have you ever seen like some of them, they kind of spin, you know, there's a clock, clockwise spinny thingy. It just takes like three, four seconds, or maybe 12 seconds for everything to load up. The actual, mm -hmm. you never noticed that? Mm -hmm. Watch this. Easy, busy pets. Let's go to um, our reviews. Okay, so on the left side is our reviews feature. On the right side is one of those external apps. Okay, so when I click that, ours loads first, and this one took a little longer. Did you notice that? Got it. Okay, so what happened there was that this is part of the system that runs the website. This is not. Okay. So uh, here's here's the good point about all this. When Google is um, looking at your site and all the content to decide on whether to rank you better, it only has a couple seconds. It doesn't have all the time in the world to look at your website which is one amongst billions, right? I don't know, I don't know how many, hundreds of millions, let's say, I don't want to overestimate. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of millions of websites that day. So if this thing doesn't load fast enough, the content will not be useful towards your searchability. That's, mm -hmm. that's the theory behind it. Okay, mm -hmm. fair enough. Anyway, but you're, you're hands off. Like you're, you're, you're just letting the system ask people for reviews and it's working for you in the background. Fair enough? Yeah, that way is no chasing. That's a, that's the hardest thing, you know, about getting reviews. You you're having to chase the client, and and it's almost um, to them, it's almost irritating. You know, it's very really irritating. They might love you, but they're not going to spend an extra minute. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's just that they're too busy, or it's too complicated. You know, you send them a link, that's already too complicated. All right. Um, we actually presented the, this this challenge to uh, I think like. Uh, it, it was a grooming channel online, you know, mm -hmm. and there many examples about, you know, all the struggles from all the business owners, because, you know, like I mentioned before, these clients, they love them, but they just, they're not going to do it. You know, they're busy. Yeah. Um, like try and give them 10% off your next service. See how well that works for you. That's not going to work either. <laughs> Cause they, yeah, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> and people, the only time they write a review is they get upset with something, you know, it's, it's most people, they only write a review when they're upset yeah. about something. But now let's say, let's say you got your review. Great. It's old after four months. You have to ask them again <laughs> and again and again and again. So are you really going to manage these reviews manually? No, <laughs> no, you won't. Um, anyway, now it gets really interesting. Um, I want to show you some billing. Okay. There's all kinds of ways to get paid. Here's the appointment. I mean, I can just view the appointment and click on invoice from there and start invoicing that specific appointment. But because you're a pet sitter, I figured maybe you might be interested in seeing the following. Okay. I'm going to a place called invoices here. And I'm going to click this button, smart invoice. Okay. Just so you know what you're looking at, this is the uh, billing record of everything I've ever built by um, uh, link to the invoice, the client, I can action on these various bills. And depending on their state, I have different options. And of course I can narrow down. It's a very mature system. We have all kinds of uh, you know, categories of states and you can search by client. There's analytics and exports here for everything. But I'm gonna click on smart invoice here. And imagine you're a really big kind of organization. Obviously, I don't have too much going on. Let's look all the way up till December 23rd. 
All right, so it's telling me that I have a customer who owes me money that I haven't billed her for for various items. In your case, you might have a thousand showing here, okay? And that's very much a reality for many of our customers. Um, and so what you would do is you would click all of them and all of them would be selected. And then you have uh, one of a few options. You can click, create a draft, which is an ongoing bill, which you can keep adding to um, for every single one of them. And what it does is it scrapes the calendar. It knows all their special pricings, everything. And it creates these draft invoices that could be sent to the customer for getting paid. Or you can create a draft and send it to the customer so that they can actually pay it. <laughs> um, you know, uh, and they can add credit cards if they don't have credit cards on the file yet or use the ones that they previously used. Or you can create a draft, send it to the customers and charge the cards that are on file if they have credit cards. And imagine doing that for like thousands of people or hundreds even. It's, it's great in one click. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a draft and it could be hundreds of people there, like all of them would have a draft in my billing. Remember that billing list that we saw earlier? Yes. Okay, so look what it did. It's, it's, it's scratched everything from the 7th. I, ju I just chose those dates from the 7th of November all the way up to the future. I'm charging people up to December, this person up to December 21st. So it Daisy or whatever pets they have is part of some appointment I can actually go to that appointment. Let's go to that appointment, this one here. Look, it's been paid by the 10 dog walking package that, uh, mm -hmm. look at that. I, I, it, it's the pricing might be unique to this pet owner. You know, their profile might have special pricing, like if they're a teacher or a veteran or something like that. Gotcha. It took me straight to my appointment, which no longer has an invoice option because it already has an invoice. There's no way to accidentally double charge you can remove things from here so that they can be charged in a future bill or something like that. I can edit it. There's no taxes here because I don't have any of these services set up with taxes because not all states take taxes. You know what I mean? Um, three decimal digit level because like New York, for example, it's 8.875, whereas some other state might have just two decimal places. That, that's, a, that's a problem with a lot of systems, believe it or not. Um, and I can I was, there were pictures associated with the owners. I failed to ask this before. Is that oh, yeah. yeah, they're there. Owner pictures and pet pictures. I can show you a little bit in just a bit. Let's add a I think I have a leash. Yeah, dog leash. This is a product. It cannot be booked. Um, let's add some state tax and give it a discount of four percent. It doesn't have to be percent, it could be a dollar amount. Let's say four dollars. Add item. I've just added that to my appointment. I could have. Sorry, I added it to my bill, but I could have added it to the appointment, which would in turn show up here in my bill. Nice, nice. So, what sort of add-ons do you have? Is there those things that you know we ourselves program into there that would be certain add-ons? Yeah, it would just show up everything you program into the system. This is not that add to cart example I was talking to you about. That's that's like you create a website page using the website builder part of the technology. Right, create your look and feel, then have your add to cart. The add to cart would link to the purchase of that specific product. Bills would be created in your operations. Imagine doing that on a website, just that. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, do some payments. Um, it's a draft bill, so I'm gonna charge them. I'm going to say, okay, so this person, she has a credit card on file. That's a real visa. So I don't wanna charge the full amount. I'm just gonna charge 10 bucks, okay? This is also a demonstration of uh, partial payments. Fair enough? She asked, this is me charging her card on file as the manager. She could be doing this too on her side. Fair enough? So I'm going to charge, and she asked me to add 10% um, or like, not 10%. She asked me to add, okay, so $10 and then 10%, um, like just, to, she asked me to add 10%, you know, over the phone or whatever. Maybe she's in front of me. Um, or so I can, I can, charge her card on file. This option could have been on a, like a machine, like a machine that I have in front of me for her to put in a credit card. It would issue the charge on the machine. She would put in the chip and pin or tap it. Um, it's in our blog, actually, if you want to see what it looks like um, on Easy Busy Pets. Uh, it's a really neat device, actually, brand new uh, technology. So 
um, it's processing an actual credit card. And now she owes me $10 less from the original sum. Um, so that's the total. That's the amount owing. See the difference is 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. Now let's do another partial payment. Uh, let's do this one in cash, not the visa, or maybe it's another visa, but you know, like they can have multiple credit cards and they want me to do all kinds of fun stuff. Let's say this is in check, um, a check for $1,700 and a tip of 15%. Mark is paid. And then the third partial payment, just to make the point here, okay, that you can, <laughs> is uh, other uh, payment through cash. And by the way, if they had a membership or a package or something like that, we might not be doing this. This is only for stuff that's not part of some kind of program that they're in. Anyway, this is a fully paid off bill. Check out what happens below. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in the bill, which means it was handled by a lot of different people. And there was a tip involved here. So each tip is divided by the system and it shows how much each person is owed based on their contribution to the total. They also have this report in their logins. You have a report for payroll and tips as well, okay? So just so you know what you're looking at here. And these are the three transactions that went down, right? Cash, check, visa. I'm going to show an example of how you can refund. So somebody comes back a month later and says, you know what, I'm not happy. Please give me 10 bucks back or whatever it is. I'm just making something up. You can search by their name, find in their profile this appointment, go to the bill from the appointment, or just search for their name in the billing uh, listing or something. Like there's a lot of ways to find it, okay? And refund it as a result. It can be given an explanation and it could be a completely partial amount. Although because it's a real visa, I'm just going to put the money back into it. Um, so just so you know, you can achieve that. All right, so that's called, uh, it has, it comes with a bunch of names, bulk billing, smart invoicing, we call it. Why? Because traditionally in the industry, bulk billing is based on like templated billing. Like you can build thousands of people, but everyone gets billed the same thing. That's not what this is. This is way beyond that. It's personalized uh, creations um, based on everything that the system knows about the client and what packages they have and, you know, what they should be charged and it uniquely creates a, creates a personalized bill and retires these appointments from being billable elsewhere. Well, that's, that's super. I, that, that's just, I mean, it's, it's very pliable, you know, and, 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 and um, kind of a, a signature, you know, for each individual. So it's personalized. Yeah. Um, when somebody gets on your site and they start signing up, you start getting all these notifications. They're filling out all these details that you want them to fill out before they become a full customer of yours. You can stop them from being able to book until you vetted it, all that kind of stuff. Like Stephanie, let's click, see how her picture pops up here. I can click on her. Yes. And Stephanie's profile has all her pets, which I can go in into their profiles right now or edit them. At the now, same are they uploading pictures of their pets? Can the client do that? Yeah, absolutely. Or you can do it on their behalf. Or I can decentralize way. I can see all my pets too. And I can search for Daisy. Um, I can click here's Daisy, here's her owner. I can view Daisy. Um, or I could have done it from Stephanie's profile. It's all connected and inter, it's an interconnected, right? Um, special pricing is here. Here's her index information, the memberships and packages with Daisy's and you know, pictures of Daisy, uh, what memberships and packages she has that apply whenever certain programs or sort of certain products or services are, you know, booked or, or purchased respectively. Um, so, you know, it gets really interesting. And sure. so, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I said, sure. No, no. Yeah, I agree. It, it, it's definitely interesting. And it just looks like a, you know, if you were to go to a, a vet's office, there's everything that's inside that folder, you know, everything that you need, you know, that's on that pet and the pet owner. Yeah. But it's unique to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, some people like to ask too much stuff and others don't ask enough, you know, in terms of the details. Um, this is an example of a blog you can set up. Um, our website, by the way, is using our technology. We don't outsource anything. We built it bottom up, including the blog technology. And here's an example of an implementation of it. And it's also part of the system on the website. And this is the device, by the way, if you want the terminal. Gotcha. Talks about the experience of using it. 
um, there's also like a docking station because this thing you walk around with, right? It's connected to any internet connection. It's on its own internet um, connection to the servers. Um, like I can I can issue something from my house right now. And if you had this device next to you down in the United States, because I'm in Canada, then it would pop up the, the charge on your device. It doesn't have to be on the same network. Fair enough? Sure. It's an all-in-one system. There's a lot you can do. I just kind of gave you a high level today. These demos, they're not intended to be overly um, exhaustive in terms of everything we offer. It's just meant to inspire you to learn more about what you can achieve with easy busy pets. So I hope I've done that. <laughs>